What is up, Ada Nation? Welcome to App Central. My name is Farid. Today, I've got some exciting news surrounding a beta for a Cardano Explorer that has officially been released by the Cardano Foundation. Now, if you're not familiar with what a Explorer is, especially for the Cardano network, this is going to be a website breaking down everything from stake pools tokens on the network, as well as any piece of metadata associated with transactions made online. Now, this is going to be a brand new beta version of an Explorer, again, released by the Cardano Foundation, which is one of the three founding arms driving the direction of Cardano, including Emergo and IOG. So jumping straight over into Twitter, I want to break down this tweet here and then we're going to head over to the official explorer in order to check it out and see exactly what this new platform has to offer now at the very end of this video i want to give you guys my take and there's been a little bit of controversy surrounding the fact that the cardano foundation has released something that was also developed by the community and i want to give you guys my take on that as well so make sure to stick around till the end of today's video so looking here on their official Twitter, it reads, today we've launched our open beta phase of our new Cardano Explorer. Now this was released one day ago or on August 14th of 2023. It continues to read, the beta introduces two key features. Number one is going to be the staking lifecycle, which is going to be a visual illustration of core blockchain concepts. And then number two is going to be the ability to compose reports or a downloadable version of a report showing the activity of stake addresses or stake pools. Now, I believe that both of these features here are going to be brand new. Nothing that I have personally seen on Cardano scan or C Explorer, which are arguably the two community driven and biggest explorers right now that we have on the network. So without taking up any more time, now that we understand exactly what this is and who it's being developed by, we're gonna head over to the official website, which is available at beta.explorer.cardano.org. As always, I'll leave the link to this down below in today's video description. So at the very top of the page here, we have the Cardano Explorer, where we can filter by things such as epochs, blocks, transactions, tokens, addresses, pools, and policy IDs. To give you guys just a brief idea as to what we have on platforms, for example, like Cardano Scan, I do have that pulled up and I'll be jumping between both of these tabs here throughout today's video. So looking at the top here, we have home, blockchain, metadata, tokens, pools, certificates, and more. And under more, we have a datum inspector, address inspector, dashboard, SPO polls, and a telegram bot. So again, the community built tools are pretty robust. And I think that you guys will also find the brand new version of the Explorer developed by the Cardano Foundation to be just as robust. Now, keep in mind that both of these do offer different things and are built for different audiences. And so it really comes down to a matter of what you prefer best. So that is going to do it there for the introduction here. At the very top, we have that first filter. Now, scrolling down, some of the things that kind of caught my eye include the fact that we have the ADA price here. So we can see the fact that, you know, ADA is down 5% over the last 24 hours, and it's currently trading at 27 cents. We also have a comparison here when it comes to Bitcoin, which is the value of ADA right now in terms of BTC. We can see that this was last updated about a minute ago. And then to the right of that, we have similar information for the market cap of Cardano, which currently sits at around, I think that is $9 billion. And then we have the current epoch, which is epoch number 430. And then a really cool thing that I like here is the fact that we can see exactly how far along we are in the given epoch. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, an epoch is going to be a duration of five days. Now, during each epoch is when the stake pools have the ability to mint blocks. And throughout that duration of an epoch, they also reward their delegators for any blocks that have been minted in prior epochs. So here we can see that there is a total of two days and six hours remaining, and we can see the total amount of slots in which blocks have been minted so far. To the right of that, we have the live stake, which right now is sitting at 22 billion 
ADA tokens, which is about 64% of the total circulating supply, which is 35 billion. Now of the total circulating supply, we have 77% um, of the ADA tokens in circulation at a 45 billion. So again, some pretty key stats here that I personally find to be useful and I can definitely see myself using this explorer moving forward or in the future. Scrolling down, we can see the transactions in the last 24 hours. We can also toggle that to view the last transactions within the last week, two weeks, or the last month. Now, the transactions themselves are broken down into three different categories. Number one is going to be metadata. Number two is going to be smart contracts. And then number three is going to be simple transactions. Again, we have a visual here showing us all of that information relatively quickly. Right below that, we have some more information surrounding the latest transactions taking place on the network. And so we can see exactly what the transaction hash is, the block in which that transaction was executed, the epoch, the slot number, the from address, the to address, and when the actual transaction was created. Right below that, we got some information surrounding the stake pools, which have produced the latest blocks. And so we can see the pool name, the pool size, the saturation, the blocks in the current epoch that that particular pool has minted, as well as their lifetime blocks over all of the epochs that they've been supporting the Cardano network. Now, one key piece that I'm really excited to see integrated into this as well is going to be this new section or this latest story section at the very bottom of the page. So we can see that they actually posted their own story, breaking down the fact that the beta phase is now open for this new explorer. We have an article breaking down the Cardano Summit, which will be taking place in Dubai for 2023. And then we have an additional collection here or an additional item surrounding technical collaborations, as well as the entering of the Voltaire era, where we saw a on-chain pool being done for the K parameter and the min pool cost. So this is one key feature that I have not seen on any of the other explorers. And again, keep in mind that while a lot of this information may overlap, it's really a preference of the layout as well as how the information is actually presented. So I think that is going to do it here for the very first portion here. And this is just covering the dashboard section. If I expand the blockchain section, I'm gonna kind of pick up the pace here, but here we have the epoch information. So we can see that we're currently in epoch number 430, and that is about 55% of the way through. We have the timestamp at which the epoch began, the timestamp at which it'll be ending, the total amount of blocks minted within that particular epoch, and then the slot that we're currently on. Again, we can view all of the blocks minted as a part of this particular epoch, and then we can see all of the previous epochs when they started, when they ended, the blocks, the unique accounts, transactions, reward distributed, and the total output. So anything related to epochs here, you can find out within this particular epoch subsection. In the blocks subsection, we can view just that information surrounding blocks. So we have their block ID, the epoch slash slot, the time that they were created, the transactions maintained within that particular block, the fees associated with it, and their output. Right below that, we have some information surrounding transactions. Again, we can view their transaction hash, their block, the fees, the output of ADA, the input address, and then the output address that may have received any portions of that particular transaction. Now, right below that, we have the native tokens. So this is interesting here as well. You can quickly search between different tokens available on the Cardano network. As you can see here, we have the icon. For this one, we have Hosky. We have the policy ID, the total transactions taking place with that particular token, the number of holders holding that asset or that policy ID, the total volume generated by that token, the 24 hour volume, the total supply, and the time that the token was created at. Now I've quickly searched for the Indigo token. And one thing that sticks out to me that I can definitely see myself using this platform for is to verify that I'm actually purchasing or using a right policy ID. So we have the Indigo token, which we can see the legitimate icon here. And then we can see some fake versions or some illegitimate versions of the Indie token that have been minted on the Cardano network. So pretty cool feature to see here quickly searching and viewing all of the Cardano native tokens or Cardano native assets. Scrolling down, we have the smart contracts where we can see the addresses associated with the smart contracts, the balances within those smart contracts, the value and the transaction counts. 
Now we're going to jump into the pool section here. Again, we have a recap of the epoch, the slot, the live stake, and the delegators within this particular epoch. And then a really cool piece that I noticed here was the total amount of pools. So while we have 56 or almost 5,700 pools on Cardano, only 3,200 are actually active with over 2,500 being retired. Now, this is an area where I think that we could have a little bit of improvement when it comes to retired pools, given the fact that, you know, just with the top five or six pools alone on Cardano, there's more than 45 million ADA delegated on the network. So we really need to do a better job or find a new way of raising awareness towards retired pools. But this is a really cool way to see what pools are active and which pools are not. Now, what I want to do is quickly take a look for my specific stake pool. So I'm going to type in DAPP at the very top there. I'm going to hit enter and I then get a list of any stake pools that have that particular filter. If I scroll down to the very bottom here, I can see the DAP central stake pool and I can see the saturation, the declared pledge, the pool size, the total number of delegators, the blocks in the current epoch, the lifetime blocks and the fixed ADA cost, as well as my margin being charged for the pool. If I click on the actual pool itself, I get a breakdown here of additional information. And this is, again, something that I find to be extremely helpful. If I get myself out of the way there, I can see the ticker, the time the stake pool was created, the reward account, the owner account, the pool size, the stake limit, as well as the fixed cost, margin, declared pledge, epoch block, and lifetime block. I can see the highest stake ever delegated to the particular pool, which for me was at 5.3 million ADA. And I can also see the lowest stake, which was at about 113 ADA when I first kicked off the pool. If I scroll down, I can see the performance of the pool over the course of the last few epochs. Again, breaking down the blocks, stake amount, delegator rewards, and the fees for each given epoch. Now, if I scroll up over here, we have this chart here breaking down the stake per epoch. So as you guys can see there, this has been a historical view or this is a historical view of the performance and with regards to staking. And then if I jump over into delegators, I can see the total amount of delegators delegating to the stake pool over time or per epoch. Again, really exciting information and visually pleasing to see here on the network. Next thing I'm going to jump into is going to be the top eight of holders. So from here, we can see all of the biggest accounts or biggest wallets holding ADA. And you can quickly filter by a total amount of addresses that you want to be seeing or that you want to see per page. So right now it's defaulted to 50, but I can increase that or decrease that as I wish. Now I can see not only the balance that these particular wallets hold, but I can also see the transaction counts associated with those wallets. Similarly, you can view the top addresses by amount staked. So you can see the pools where the actual ADA is being staked, and then you can see the total amount currently staked to those particular pools. Jumping down to the next section, we have the operation, operational certificates. And so if, you are, if you're ever interested in seeing when a particular stake address was registered, you can do that. You can see the block in which that was done in the specific time, as well as the transaction has associated with that. If you want to see the stake address deregistration, again, you can also do that following in the next tab. You can also view the stake delegations, the pool certificates associated with the stake pools, when they were actually minted or created, as well as the pledge and fixed costs associated with that. And then very similarly, you can see the pool deregistration, excuse me, in the same exact columns. Now, if I jump over to the staking lifecycle, I'm going to copy my stake pool address here. And I'm going to jump back over and I'm going to paste it here. And we have another really cool piece here that I don't see on any platform, for example, like Cardano scan. So I can see when the stake pool was registered in the next tab, I can see any of the pool updates with respect to registration, deregistration, etc. And then I can see the operator rewards. And then if the pool was to have ever been deregistered, I could also see that in that fourth and last section. Now you can also change the view um, in how this is actually displayed. So you can either go through a timeline view or you can use this tabular format to see all of that same exact information.
Now, the very last piece that I want to jump into is going to be a pretty cool one here, and this is going to be the current protocol parameters. Now, some of you may or may not know that we did recently have a uh, test poll for the Voltaire era where the stake pool owners or SPOs on Cardano were able to vote for changes to the K parameter or the saturation parameter, as well as the min pool cost, which is a cost paid out to the stake pool operator before uh, rewards go out to their delegators. So from here, we can see a lot of these different metrics or parameters. So if I scroll down, we should actually be able to see the K parameter. So here we have the min pool cost, which right now is at 340 ADA. Now this value here is showing in love laces. So keep that in mind, there is a decimal conversion that has to take place. Now, one thing that's really cool is you can see exactly when this was updated and the timestamp in which this was done. So the min pool cost has been at 340 ADA for let's see here a little bit over three years being updated last on july 29th of 2020 if i scroll down just a little bit more let's see if we can find the k parameter we may or may not be able to see that here i believe it's currently set to 500 and i actually don't see that one here so i'll jump around and see if i can maybe find that somewhere else but I wanted to touch on that. So let's see here. Maybe it's towards the bottom. Let's just quickly check here. And I don't see that down there either. So it looks like there are probably some parameters that have yet to be added. But I did want to touch on the fact that, you know, it is really cool to be able to quickly jump in and see exactly, you know, what parameters are currently plugged in into the actual Cardano network. Towards the very bottom here, we have some resources about the Cardano Foundation documentation as well as their news and blogs. And then for those of you who are a little bit more tech savvy, they have a link to a blockchain course, some builder tools and their official GitHub. So that is going to do it for the actual review of the Cardano scan, or excuse me, of the new beta version of the Cardano Foundations Explorer. Again, I did touch on some similarities with Cardano scan and C Explorer. Now, as I promised at the very beginning of this video, I do want to quickly touch on some of the sentiment surrounding this, which was recently released by the Cardano Foundation. And the fact that we already have some community built tools providing very similar information. So again, it seems like there are two separate camps. One camp is excited about the fact that the Cardano Foundation has released something like this, while there also appears to be a camp that's kind of with the thought that there is no need to rebuild the wheel using the Cardano treasury funds, especially given the fact that the community has built very similar tools. Now, I am of the mind that the more tools at our disposal, the better, just like we've seen with DEXs on Cardano. Some people may like wing riders. Some people may like mint swap. Some people may like Sunday swap, and it's all you know, basically breaking down or comes down to your personal preference and to your personal taste. Again, I know for some people, you know, are really, or for some people who are really technical, they may want a lot of additional options, whereas some people may just want the simplest option. And I think this is where the different versions of explorers really come in. So maybe if you're technical and you appreciate what the Cardano scan platform is doing, that is the place for you to go. But if you're a little bit more visual and you like some of the timeline features that the brand new Explorer from the Cardano Foundation offers, then maybe that's the place for you to go. So nonetheless, I do think that it is good, a good thing for us to have this here. I would never say for the Cardano Foundation not to build anything, you know, for them to be building something is better than nothing. Now, one thing that I have noticed is that with the version that has been released by the Cardano Foundation, is that there are no ads with that or throughout the entire platform whereas on platforms like i believe c explorer as well as cardano scan they do host some ads which can be somewhat distracting and obviously that is done to make sure that they have enough revenue to keep the platforms running so i completely understand the need for the ads but again it does kind of take away sometimes from the experience that said that is going to bring me through the end here of today's video let me know what you think down below do you appreciate a new cardano scan explorer or a new cardano explorer i should say or are you of the mindset that you know we have enough of these tools and that the cardano foundation should be looking to build something new that has yet to be delivered on the network so far either way if you appreciate content like this i would appreciate you if you could tap that like button if it's your first time stopping by the channel and you want more content like this consider subscribing 
And if you have any questions for me surrounding anything related to Cardano or this brand new Explorer, then make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video.